and welcome to another video for Auto Solutions Checkpoint and today we're going to be replacing a vacuum pump on a Mark 7 Transit okay, So basically what has happened with this vacuum pump um, This vacuum pump is less than a year old uh, You can't really see it well um, But it's less than a year old Basically it's overheated and seized up So we're going to be replacing it with a new one And hopefully that one gets longer out of it so I'll just show you the process Right, so you're undoing all these pipes um, for the thermostat housing um, Whenever you're removing the thermostat housing be very very careful especially with this one right, because these are very guilty of snapping No matter how gentle you are with them there's a possibility that they could snap So just be very very careful My best advice to you is whenever you're removing these remove every other one of these first and then do this here one last Okay, so we now have access to it. As you can see, it has been very, 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 very hot. Um, and that's what it's done around here. What happens whenever these here fail? They start to spit out oil all over. Believe it or believe it not, done less than 300 miles. And this has happened. Um, when this was first changed, the vehicle sat dormant for a while uh, without an MOT. And then whenever it was MOT, it's only been used for a few jobs. Um, so less than 300 miles, which is a bit of a shambles. Like look at the nick of it, and look at what it's done. Whenever this here fails, you lose your brakes, basically. The brake pedal is like standing on breeze blocks. You do get a stop, but it's as if the ABS doesn't work. If this ever happens to you, that's what it is. So before you replace these, always check at the back of them. I don't know if you can see here. Always check this here bit first. There's a pipe that goes into it. If that pipe is has come out or it's the holes or anything in it, that's what's going to happen. This isn't going to work. As you can see in this here one, it's well connected in. So we need to get the auxiliary belt, serpentine belt off. And on the tensioner here, uh, you've got a little square. Now I use a half inch drive into that to bring it across just to get the belt off. What I use for it is my extending ratchet and what I use is my step down and step up for the ratchet. Uh, these are generally used if you've got a half inch ratchet and you want to reduce it. So basically it's a reducer or if you've got a smaller ratchet and you want to use a bigger socket. What you need to do is take the dipstick out to allow you clearance right, to get a good sweep across Okay, so that's it fully across and we can now get the auxiliary belt off. Auxiliary belt's now off, we can now get the vacuum pump off as well, which is 10 mils. So for this here one you'll need a deeper socket, if you will. So you're just basically better using a deep socket for all of it. I'll go back to this here because I forgot about that. You probably noticed that that's a tor torque um, whenever I was doing this here, the bolt and the last one went walkies so that was just a replacement one I put in the meantime so that's irrelevant you don't need to worry about that so a bit of uninteresting bubble so before you fit the new vacuum pump you want to clean all this here area up just get it as clean as you can as you can get it before you put the gasket on so back sitting in the jeep now because it opened up out the heavens and it is raining it's starting to calm down right now okay so back to the lecture at the end Right, this is the part that's needed for it. Right, so it's got this little gasket as well. However, I'm having a look at this. Um, it's got two little rubber O-rings and a bigger gasket. Now, the gasket is thin, right? I've no idea where that, that goes. So I'm assuming it's maybe for the water pump or something. I am not sure. But the O-rings, they don't sit exactly inside that. But what I'm thinking is, on the water pump, it's got like re, uh, recesses. So I'm assuming that they sit in the recesses and this here goes on top of it. And then that there goes on top of it. So the last time I fitted it, i uh, done exactly the same. However, I used like a sealant, but I really don't think I would need a sealant on that. So I'm going to do it, put it back together again without a sealant and see what happens 
just as a test. So let's get this fitted. So again, make sure that the base is nice and clean. I'm going to place these little O-rings in. They sit in there. This is the only... Like, that's all I can think that they're there for, <coughs> to be honest. And then this here sits over the top. I could be wrong, but 100% I think that's where they belong. Because that there's where I put them the last time and I never really had a problem. However, I put sealant on. Because uh, I ended up with seepage coming out here. But I'll try it again and see what's what. Also, whenever you're offering up the vacuum pump, see this little pipe I was telling you about? Um, get that back in before you set this on and tighten it up. So that's it on, nice and snug. And so always remember, see what bolts that you use because they're usually different amongst them. Right, so the Retorex one was at that side. This here one was here. And this here one was over here. I think these, uh, if you're doing it correctly by the book, if you're using a torque wrench, which is something I don't use, it's, I think it's something like 23 Newton meters. I could be wrong, but I don't use torque wrenches. It is blowing a gale, and I don't mean gale plat off Carnation Street. Yuck. Right, this is uh, all tightened up. It'll just be a case of getting our thermostat housing on. And you just need to be as careful putting it on as you do taking it off. So please bear this in mind whenever you're putting it back together again. And also, whenever you're putting it back together again, don't forget to replace the water and antifreeze as well. Okay, so that's that put back together again. We've just got to get the auxiliary belt on and also replace any of the fluids that has been lost. Okay, that's it all back together again, belt on, um, antifreeze is actually at the level up here. Um, I know it kind of looks like the level's at the minimum, but it's not, it's actually right on level. So we've got all seasons at antifreeze, uh, we need to get the dipstick back on as well. Um, and then we'll give it a little try and see what we've got. Just going to tidy the tools up. Right, just for uh, future reference, right, I'm not sponsored by these guys at all, but you can pick these here up on eBay, cheap as chips. Like I'm talking 20 odd quid for like 12 bottles of this, which is brilliant. Um, I've been using Manol for a good while, and see to be honest, I can't fault the stuff at all. Um, I've ordered a uh, diesel treatment for injectors and that, I'm going to give it a try, because usually uh, I use 40, but I'll try the Manol stuff and see how I get on. Cheap and cheerful, but very snazzy bottles and that as well. So I'm now ready to get this thing started. So look at the mileage on this. 248,000. And the big van does exactly what it says in the tin. Now, this hasn't been started at all in, I reckon, before Christmas. This is one of my own personal ones, by the way. So fingers crossed. Here we go. It's so far, so good. There's no seepage coming from that. The big question in my mind is, do I have brakes? That is the question. Now, I don't want to take this for a test run because I've got the Audi TT doors in the back of this. This is the looting, by the way. Um, so I don't want them damaged. So I'm just going to move forward. Well, I'm getting brake pedal. I'm definitely getting brake pedal. Whereas before, yeah, I've got brakes. Safe to say that's the job done. Auto Solution Checkpoint has sorted it, so... Uh, I'll give it a wee run tonight because I've managed to find a good um, storage system for the L200. 
So whenever the L200 comes back from the body shop because it's it's getting uh, a good bit of body work done because uh, it got damaged back at the start of December. So I decided to treat it to some goodies. So I've got nice new arches for it. Um, oversized wheels which I've discovered do not fit. So I will need to raise the body or raise the suspension. I'm not sure but I would need to get advice from somebody that actually knows what they're doing because I've never uh, raised a Jeep before or raised the body, you know. Um, so I'll need a bit of advice on that. But the storage system is quite class looking and it'll keep my mobile mechanic unit nice and tidy for going to jobs. Everything will be organised instead of uh, having to climb inside the back of the canopy. Everything will be at hand. So I'm going to pick that up tonight. It's advertised for, I think it's like 600 odd pounds, which is a steal in comparison to what the, they actually sell for, because it's a metal one, it's not a wee wooden one. Uh, I think the metal ones go for about 1600 pounds. So we'll see. But I think I'll use, I'll use the looting to go and get it tonight and hopefully it behaves itself because it has not been used in a good while. But anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'm going to go and get cleaned up because I look like I've been down a coal mine. Uh, you guys take care and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, oh, and by the way, the analytics for this channel, there is still a high volume of people watching my channel that aren't actually subscribed. Um, and you're returning back to my channel to watch me, so I must be doing something right. But I would love it if you would thump the subscribe button down below. I would really appreciate that. And to all the rest of you that are subscribing and keeping the channel alive, thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you. I'll catch you in the next video, but 10-10 over and out.